Hey everyone! In this video, we're going to review some flat pack usage for the RHCSA objectives on RHEL 10. So, if you scroll down a bit here into Manage Software, you'll see some objectives like configure access to flat pack repositories and install and remove flat pack software packages. So, this will be worth checking out for a bit because flat pack is pretty neat. But uh, right off the bat, if you don't know, Flatpak's a tool that allows applications to run with some sandboxing features and be packaged in more or less a distribution agnostic way, with their dependencies and internal files being managed separately from the host system's package managing solution. That's pretty much the gist, but we'll play around with it a bit more in just a moment. Also, one of the likely many reasons the current RHCSA is bringing more emphasis to Flatpak's use is because Red Hat planned to use Flatpaks as the distribution method of choice for certain frequently updated apps in RHEL 10. In fact, back in the beta version of RHEL 10, they actually didn't include stuff like Firefox and Thunderbird through the default DNF repos like we've been used to, and the idea is that the user would be using a Flatpak instead for those particular applications. Which does make sense, I mean, it is nicer after all to have a more up-to-date web browser where it's not tied to the slower release schedule of the system's core packages like you'd get from DNF. But Red Hat did actually end up walking back on the idea, at least for now, for when RHEL 10 hit general availability. So now the desktop installs do have stuff like Firefox available in the app stream repos like before, but I wouldn't really say this is the end of the story either, because we actually can still see some footprints of this planned change in the release version of RHEL 10.2. So uh, yeah, check this out. I'll head over to my VM. So this is just a plain RHEL 10 VM. I don't really have any uh, major graphical apps installed besides what comes with GNOME. In fact, I can show you that. So sudo DNF history, and then type that in. And you'll see here, all I've pretty much done is install the package group for the desktop session. So uh, anyways, if I do a sudo dnf search, and I look for something like Firefox, since I mentioned that, uh, we'll see here that there are actually two matching uh, packages for my query. So there's Firefox like we're used to, and then there's the second one, Red Hat Flatpak pre-install Firefox thingy. So uh, let's go and look deeper into that one actually. Um, DNF, sudo DNF info, and then I'll just copy and paste this because it is a bit long. There we go. And yeah, so you'll see that this package is actually really tiny. And it's simple. It just adds a file to etc flatpacks preinstall.d, and that's pretty much a way for like preinstallation scripts to add this flatpack automatically. Okay, pretty cool. But with this stuff in mind, it is safe to guess that Red Hat does believe flatpack is the future for distribution of at least certain types of packages, and we'll probably expect them to start leveraging it more going further. Further, I meant further. So yeah, future proofing, pretty fun. Now, I'll be assuming that you're using a graphical session like I am, and we'll go ahead and uh, just make sure we have Flatpak installed now with sudo dnf flat or install flatpak. Can't type today. And there we go. No surprises there. We already have it. It's kind of a loose dependency with the desktop environment, actually. And uh, I'll just run flatpak double dash help. It's for goofs, just to make sure it's all good, and it is. And so, yeah, uh, there is uh, different Flatpak repositories out there. If you're familiar with Flatpak already, you probably know about FlatHub, which is sort of the de facto remote repository in the Flatpak community. I can actually pull it up here in my browser in just a second. So I'll go over to flathub.org. And, oh, okay, the website's having a bit of trouble, but usually it would show you like a catalog, kind of like that. I don't know what's up with that, but yeah, this is flathub.org. We'll come back to it later, though. Back to the terminal, 
And uh, yeah, so this is all well and good, but Red Hat has their own special flat pack repo specifically for RHEL, which makes sense. I mean, they're going to provide support for like uh, what they can for their business subscribers. So naturally then, what is the dedicated RHEL flat hub repo? Well, if we go back and take a look at that etc directory that we uh, touched on before, so cd etc flat pack, We'll see here that there's this remotes.d directory. We'll go in there. And there's this rel.flathub repo file. Let's take a look at that. And yeah, so uh, check this out. We clearly see that this is an INI style config that um, where flatpacks.redhat.io is presumably the endpoint for this OCI styled distribution of these packages. And um, just to be clear, OCI is referring to the Open, Cana Open Container Initiative spec, which is embraced by tools like Docker and Podman. And, you know, it's for distribution of container images and standardizing the definition of those things. Um, not to get sidetracked, of course, but anyway, even generally, just from vibes here, we can see that um, this FlatHub repo does need some kind of OCI authentication to be accessed, so I guess that's something to keep in mind for later. And yeah, there's also clearly a web page here where you can look at the catalog of the software available from this endpoint uh, if you ever want to. Okay, cool. So we do have this repo already added in our base installation, um, and Flatpak can use it if we just say Flatpak remotes. We can confirm that, and you'll see here that it does say we have this system repo available. Now, it is worth knowing how to add other repos of our choice. So the usual thing is to add a .flathub repo file that may be provided internally within an organization, or you could just find it publicly on the internet. So I mean, the former internally in an organization is more applicable in like a real office scenario. But for simplicity and easier reproducibility here, We'll add a FlatHub repo for FlatHub from the uh, .FlatHub repo file, FlatPack repo file. I'm getting mixed up here. I'm so sorry. So anyways, I'll head back over to FlatHub here. And down at the bottom, there is this like setup documentation. I'll just say rel. And here, uh, what we'll see is that the um, there is the download for the .FlatPack repo file right here. So that's pretty cool. Um, with that in mind, we'll head back to the terminal again, and we can add flatpak repos simply with the following command. We'll just be like flatpak remote add, and then double dash if not exists, and then this is the name of the repo, so we'll just call it flathub like they want us to, and then the endpoint name, so https one slash last DL, you get the idea. Org repo flat hub dot flat pack repo. Easy to get mixed up with this, honestly. So yeah, self-explanatory by the way, but the if not exists just means don't error out if it's already configured. Also, um, you'll notice that I didn't prefix the command with sudo, and that's just because we're doing things with the flatpak command, and the default behavior is for it to make changes effectively system-wide. And you can kind of infer that uh, with this prompt I got here asking for an administrator password. So I'll just type in my password because my user is an administrator and authenticate. Oopsie, it did not like that. And there we go. So uh, if you don't want it to be system-wide, by the way, there is this double dash user flag that you could tack on if you want, but we'll focus on the system-wide behavior mainly here. Okay, so the repo was added now, and we can confirm that by running flatpak remotes again. And there we go. We can see here that the flathub repo is available system-wide. And so anyways, the places where you would expect to find these config changes in is in, um, let's see, bar lib flatpak, 
So under this directory, we do have some more Flatpak related files for configuring it. Um, under repo, there is a file called config. So I'll go ahead and take a look at that. And what do you know, at the bottom here, we do have the Flatpak, oh, sorry, Flathub repo uh, data here, the information, how to reach out to it. So that's good. So um, it's also worth noting that the other common location to configure system-wide remotes in is in etc flatpak repo remotes.d, like I've alluded to in the past. We already took a look at this rel.flatpak repo. And yeah, pretty cool. So adding the flathub remote was mainly just an example. So let's just say I don't want it anymore. We can simply just do a flatpak remote delete and then the name of the remote. So that's just flathub. We'll do that. We have to authenticate again. There we go. And now if I check out that config file, we shouldn't see it in there. And we definitely should not see it in the list of remotes right here. And we don't. So that's good. So back to the vendor supported rel repo again. Let's try to search for a package uh, from there, like Firefox. So I'll do a flat pack search Firefox. And uh, there we are. So we can go ahead and install this here with the flat pack install rel to specify uh, what uh, remote we want it to come from, in this case, the rel remote. And then we're going to provide the reverse fully qualified name notation we see right here. And this is going to be a recurring theme with Flatpak. This is how you identify packages. So I'll do that and uh, say yes. It'll ask me to confirm and proceed. And oh, check that out. So it is going to prompt us to authenticate. And this is where we'd use our Red Hat login credentials to access the subscriber content, just like other stuff from registry.redhat.io like we do with containers. So I'll go ahead and type this in. And whoopsie daisy, what did I do wrong? Let's try that again. And there we go. So it's proceeding. And uh, yeah, you'll see here that there's also this common base package called com.redhat.platform. And it's being pulled in here as a dependency. And uh, that just provides like the runtime uh, features and stuff that we'll need to run Firefox. So it's actually quite big. It's bigger than Firefox, actually. And uh, yeah, we're done. So we can run a flat pack list and we'll see Firefox right there. And it also has been picked up by our desktop environment launchers uh, shortcuts list. So if I head up here back into the GNOME dash, there is actually a Firefox um, right there. But not only that, you can also run Firefox by doing a flat pack run org.mozilla.firefox, just that reverse domain name notation again. And we should see Firefox come here in just a second. And there we go. Very cool. And nice. And it also just dumped a bunch of stuff to the screen from the standard out of the Firefox app. So that's fun. I'm going to clear the screen for that. Um, anyways, as you'd expect, if you want to update your flat packs, there's also flat pack update. And this is going to check for updates for all installed flat packs. But if you want to just specify a specific one, you could do so as well, like Firefox. Of course, there won't really be any updates. We just installed it. And uh, yeah, so let's say you don't want Firefox anymore. Well, uh, since it's closed, we'll just say a flat pack and then uninstall. And then org.mozilla.firefox, like so. And it'll ask us to confirm. And there we go, it's gone. So uh, another thing you can do if you want is you can also delete the user data for the app while installing it by adding double dash delete data. And that would also 
help you remove like some of the saved data. I think it is located in the home directory under dot bar. And yeah, it looks like this is where Firefox kept its data that it generated at runtime. So yeah, if you want to remove that as well, you can install it, uninstall it with this command, or you could just get rid of it from this directory if you want as well. Okay, so lastly, there's also flat pack uninstall double dash unused, and this clears um, pretty much everything that's unused, as you could guess. So that even includes runtimes or extensions that are no longer ne needed by any app. So it just got rid of the platform uh, package as well now. So I guess that's kind of like good hygiene, but many packages do need the common base platform package to do their work. It's pretty much the runtime for everything else um, before any other, you know, auxiliary dependencies. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Flat packs. they've been here for a while for the past few major releases, and with the way RHEL 10 is headed, it seems like Red Hat is excited to adopt the technology more as time goes on. Alright, that's enough yapping for me. Thank you, and have a swell day. Bye!